Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're back on it with the Inghams because believe it or not, no matter how much I try to leave them alone, they just keep doing shit like they pulled the past couple of days. Now if you haven't seen it, yesterday's thumbnail was atrocious, it was, yeah I'm not going to describe it or show it but you know if you've seen it, you've seen it and if you haven't can always go and have a look it was bad and chris needs to be locked up for that but aside from that what the actual hell is the matter with them both of them but first before we get on to the actual matter at hand chris has been spouting shit on instagram and it is bad so somebody commented, this is stunning. Hope you are away from all the trouble in France. Stay safe. So it's great that their actual IFAM are looking out for them. You know, as much as we disagree with them, what, you know, the IFAM and everything and everything that they bring, at least they have common sense in the sense that keep your kids safe. However, Chris replied with the most ignorant reply I think I've ever read. If, if the mainstream media are reporting trouble, you wouldn't know it in the country. Certainly not where we have been anyway. So I don't know where to start with that. I really don't know. I mean, if the mainstream media are reporting it, He's saying it as if it's some sort of hoax or something. Yeah, the mainstream media, they make up stories like this all the time. In fact, I happen to see loads of clips on on the TV and even on YouTube that just depicts such horrific violence all over the country that only, only the mainstream media would have put that together and uh, come up with a conspiracy that it's all a hoax. Right, Chris? I mean, come on. Now, he is actually in the country, so you would think that he would have an inkling of it actually going on. An inkling, just a little bit. I know the violence and the riots and everything is not over where they are. I knew they would be okay because there was no way that these idiots are going to go anywhere near the cities or anything with culture. So... They were gonna, always going to be perfectly safe. No problems whatsoever. I had no issues. That being said, if it was me and my family, five children, a wife and an unborn baby, I just really wouldn't take the risk personally. Maybe it's just me being overprotective, but I wouldn't take the risk. But Chris, he doesn't even know anything's going on. So why would he... Uh, <laughs> why would he bother yeah how can you actually be in france right now actually in the country and know less about what's going on in the country than those of us who are not even there i just, i have no clue he is an absolute idiot isn't he <laughs> that is just like as ignorant as the whole or oh, COVID's a bit of hype, you know? It's all hype. Yeah, the the mainstream media really hyped up this whole um, violence thing that's going on. I hope, Chris, that after you, <laughs> after you wrote that, you actually went away and had a look up to see what was actually going on. Because the what's going on right now in the country where you are is absolutely horrific. And... Um, it's just really shouldn't be taken lightly. I mean, your comment just showed an enormous amount of ignorance. It's unbelievable. And not just ignorance, but just it's insulting to the people who are going through everything that they're going through right now over there. It's just ignorant and insulting. That's all I can say about that. But on the same day, <laughs> Christ. On the same day that he wrote that, he wrote this reply to somebody. So this person wrote, You'll love putting the UK down every time. And she moans about the heat abroad non-stop. I mean, that's perfectly true. <laughs> you know, Sarah is one for moaning, whatever the weather. But 
if the heat is the heat, then she is on one, guaranteed. And Chris does put the UK down because he'd rather be American, really. And Chris replied to this. Um, the UK. I'm allowed because I'm a British resident. <laughs> I'm a resident. Right. I'm allowed because I'm a resident. Yet, I don't. I, that's the most ignorant thing. What, one of the most ignorant things. It's not the most ignorant thing that he wrote that day, remember? But I'm allowed to put the UK down because I'm a resident. It's like saying, well, I can be fat phobic because I'm fat, or I can make fun of the. Ang- you know, the anxious people because I suffer with anxiety. You can't do that just because you you are a sufferer or whatever, right? It's not how life works. So, what British resident with even the most minute amount of self-awareness doesn't complain about the state it's in? Oh my good God. Yeah, the UK in certain aspects is not in the greatest form that it's been in in a while. However, it's not the only country that's in a state at the moment. You know that little ignorant comment you made a little while ago about the the French <laughs> and not knowing that they are in a state of crisis right now. They are in a state of crisis right now and you are complaining about the UK and the situation they're in right now. See where the... <sighs> Do you understand where I'm coming from on this one, Chris? So self-awareness about the UK and the world in general. So when you went away to the Maldives, that time, you know, when people were being advised to stay at home because there was a pandemic on and everything, you went that you had no clue. You had no clue what was going on in the world. None whatsoever. And you, you have no clue that there's a situation going on right now in France and you are actually in France. You have no idea about the cost of living crisis because you spend money like it's water. And and then you moan about the most minute things when everybody else is struggling with actual problems. That is the self-awareness that you're talking about, is it, Chris? And, um, And Sarah, she doesn't complain. Trust me, I live with her. Well, I've got to say, if, you know, you show your best bits, apparently, the highlights of your day, the best 20 minutes of your life, apparently, and um, Sarah does complain a fair amount about the weather and it being hot because she, she can't stand the heat, and yet she persists in going to these hot countries. But anyway, and yet, if she's doing it that much, then maybe she's doing it off camera too. I don't know. Maybe you decide that we want to see her moaning. Anyway, just to prove the point, in the very same vlog here, um, she's not moaning about the weather, but she is complaining. I also did really quickly want to say, if anybody's new around here, not watched the last few vlogs and don't know what I'm talking about when I say an air, airs are pretty much basically like stops along the way. They've got them all over in Europe and they're so good. The UK is seriously behind with truck stops, seriously behind. Um, Obviously for motorhomes and caravans too, but especially trucks. But um, Yeah, so that that was a two-in-one scenario there. Not only was Sarah complaining, but she was actually complaining about the UK. So there you go. Anyway, we're on to the vlog. And just to catch you up, they were in France. (laughs) We've already mentioned that. They're in France. And they are at their favourite destination. So basically, we drove two seconds around the corner. We got to here and realised we were making a mistake. Why are we rushing off? Why are we rushing to sleep in a service station or an air? 
when we can sleep right by this absolutely beautiful gorge. So we're risking it for a biscuit. The weather might be really bad tomorrow. Hopefully though, in the morning if we get up bright and early, we'll get a couple of hours at least to maybe hire a boat. Oh my word. Yeah, you oh, 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 dead. Dead. oh no. <laughs> Sorry Jace, it's okay darling. It's just water, to... sweetheart. You give me a sign. Give me a sign. Oh, give me a sign. Baby, give me a sign. Just give me a sign. There's so many people on boats in there as well. There's so many people on boats on there. Oh, I stole it, man. Oh, get me to that water, 25. This dude here, this dude just did jump from almost oh, at that height. No, don't do that. Oh my gosh. Don't I feel like he's. Look how high he is right now. No, it's, 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 oh, no, it's, do it. it's ridiculous how high he is. Oh my gosh. Oh, no. I can't even watch. I can't watch that. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, he's going to do what? it. He is going to do it as well. Oh my gosh. I think it's going to see if it's rocky down there. It should not do that. Oh, oh my gosh. There you go, they're in the Lach Saint Croix. So, <laughs> the more eagle eyed of you may have realized that that wasn't all from the one vlog, that was four separate occasions where they've been to the same place. But I thought, since uh, you know, it's four, <laughs> you know. Who's going to make, who's going to notice any difference, right? They've been there so many times. May as well just stick them all together. It's all the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, on to the more, more serious and pressing matters of pimping out your kids and endangering them. Because the whole vlog was an absolute shit show of let's put our kids in bikinis and just out there to the world. Here, have, have my girls, have them, have them, yes, you can have them, it's okay, don't worry, come one and all, my children are there for everybody to consume, isn't that right, Chris, isn't that right, what does, what, what exactly goes through your mind when you do things like that, who knows, but aside from that, um, your children are, not there to be like <laughs> i don't know the word for it something along the lines of um killed just just putting it out there you know when um we had this whole discussion a couple of years back about the whole um you know drowning and things like that and the the um buoyancy aids do you remember the buoyancy aids mr ingram so i've noticed recently that um you will generally put buoyancy aids on your youngest three the oldest two obviously are immune to drowning you know the older you get the more immune you become to it you know um, I'm just, you know, what do I know? I don't, I don't go, go out swimming in gorges and stuff like that. So I don't know. Maybe it's just safe, right? Maybe there is like things underwater that stop you from drowning. Who knows? So why is it though? Now hear me out here, Chris. Why is it when you get Isla, who is 11 years of age, she goes out with a life vest on obviously a standard issued professionally issued 
one from the people who gave you the boat, right? So she goes out with a buoyancy aid on and she's jumping off the the cliff and everything and doing everything fine. But then one time she's not any longer wearing her life vest. Why? Why 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 did you allow her to take the life vest off if she needs it? She needs it. Just taking it off just so she she can do a, a jump off the cliff, no less. <laughs> You know, because what could go wrong if you're jumping off a cliff into water? And um, what what's that one thing that you might just need if you go too far under? Possibly you hit yourself. I don't know. But, you know, what's that one thing that you might need? I know, I know. It's a buoyancy aid. Something that will bring you back to the surface. <laughs> Maybe it's just me being silly again i don't know but another issue and this i'm absolutely dumbfounded i'm really really lost for words with this one chris really really so again you've got jace right he's four years of age he was given a life vest by the boat people however right now this i am stunned after a while, you take the boat back, so you have to give the life jacket back, I'm sure. Now, you then take him back out on a paddleboard, and he doesn't have a life jacket anymore. He has that stupid little puddle jumper thing, right? And what's that thing going to do to protect him against drowning? <laughs> it's, it's like, you know... It's like just armbands. Like those plastic stupid little armbands that you wear at the swimming pool just to try to learn to swim. In fact, this puddle jumper is designed for learners, toddlers who are learning to swim. And you put him out in the middle of the sea. Well, you know, the gorge. And um, what? And then, and then not, not content with that... But you allow him to climb into the freezing cold water. Freezing cold water. With that, just that puddle jumper on thing. He, how actual, how, actually how stupid are you? Watch Jace trying, <laughs> scrambling to get back onto the to get back out of the water having climbed in and the only person with jace in the water is 11 year old isla what the actual hell is the matter with you why what what is isla gonna do if jace god forbid goes into shock from the water being so fucking freezing and is she she's what's she gonna do and what are you gonna do you're on the the paddleboard thing and you know you end up just leaning over and dragging him back into the on maybe to the gorge isabel and esme kindly offered to go back to the van and make us all some lunch whilst they're doing it me and isla and jace are gonna go for a little paddle jace said he's going for a swim with isla don't worry i'll stay right here Oh, you want me to go first? Yeah. Alright. Okay. Woo! Oh, it's cold. Go. Chase, you're yeah. plopping in. Oh, it's a bit cold. Woo! <laughs> Clever <laughs> boy. Whoa, did you see that kid now? There we go. Too cold. Too cold. Too cold. You want to come back in? Oh, Emmet. It scams me. Come on. It scams me. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get in and I'll get, I'll get in later. Later. Go, go. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm not making much sense here, but the level of stupidity that it is Chris Ingham is be, is off the charts, off the actual charts. Ignorant, insulting, and absolutely stupid, moronic. All those words 
can to be can you can describe Chris as I I'm lost for for new adjectives to describe him. I really am. I'm disgusted and um, ashamed that um, we have to breathe the same air as a man like that. And um, and Sarah, Sarah, you're not getting out of this either because yet yeah, you weren't there. But what the hell did you do? When you watch that footage back, what did you do to Chris? Did you do anything? Did you say anything to Chris? Did you say, Christopher, why the fuck are you trying to kill my kids? Why? Or did you, in fact, say, oh, jeez, that was so cute. Oh, gee, you know, you know, the, the sort of thing that you do. Is that what you, in fact, would have done? More than likely. I am disgusted with the pair of you. And, um, yeah, I. that's all I can say. So basically, we are we're down on the on the shore where we used where we've been. We came in 2020. We came here twice in 2020 when we came on that caravan road trip. But we came again once in 21. The first time we came here in 2020, the day before that, Sarah told me that she was pregnant with the pregnancy that we lost, unfortunately. Well, I'm just saying, it was special. No, it was special that the first time we came, it was special because me and Sarah were the only ones that knew that she was pregnant. So it was really really nice. Before the car blew up and the whole trip went to absolute. Yeah, yeah. Before like a week before the car blew up and the whole trip went a bit crazy. Crazy, but um, it's all good. Anyway, we've got very fond memories here, so Lax and Choir is special to us. Special in a kind of upsetting way because I'm, I'm sure if you were pregnant at the time and you had a baby loss like a week later, it's just it feels like that's probably something which would bring back bad memories rather than good memories it's too awkward <laughs> yeah. but you know what it's about three o'clock in the afternoon and we've been here since about 11 so i think we've i think we've done all right considering we would have been exactly considering we're planning on staying in an air last night or a service station and driving oh did you hear that thunder I swear there's two thunderstorms. There's one behind us over that, and then there's another one that way. Yeah, it could be echoing around, yeah. Anyway, we've had a really good day. We've been on the gorge. Not for the first time you've been on the gorge, Sarah. I found this clip of you being on the gorge one other time. One of the other times. Oh, no. Okay, man it up. Man up! Man up! Man up! I think you got a bit of a something on the side of your your mouth uh, on maybe on the right hand side there have you got it get it just lick your, your finger and wipe it away yeah i think you got it there sarah that's okay um but this <laughs> i've got to show this bit i'm sorry no really can't That was classic Ingham's before the times of the jokes about Se about Chris having a bald patch. Sarah would never say that now, so that makes it even funnier. <laughs> We've paddle boarded. I know, they're terrible, aren't they? And we've had a great day, so we're not going to complain. No, we're not. It's been cool. It's been great. So it ended up taking us a couple of hours once we got back to the van for everyone to get themselves organised and sorted. Sort the van out so that it's suitable to drive in. And pop all the car seats back where they belong. Um, but, well, the car straps, the car seat belts. The seat belts for the girls were actually already unstrapped on one side, but not on the other because Isabel doesn't like to sit on there with it in her back. So get the seat belts all organised on the dinette. Um, and then what did oh and set up the vlog as well so we set up the vlog so that we don't have to stop um, to do that on on the road so that's all done and organised and now we're about to set off and start making our way towards Spain if we can get out that is the question because we just had somewhat oh, actually that's a big gap actually is that a big gap yeah we can easily get out of there it looks close look when we first got back to the van there was a car literally like there thankfully though he's moved on 
the actual entitlement in that speech now is just ridiculous. Oh, thank God that person moved on because now we can get our humongous truck out. Whereas it would have been a tight squeeze before because they had the in consideration to park next to us i guarantee sarah that that person who parked next to you was thinking very much the same thing except for in stronger words like what the fuck is that thing doing next to my car right you don't have the rights to the road because you have a huge truck you know it's everybody's road everybody's parking and in fact you have to have more consideration than most i feel because you have this truck and you are not the kings of the road although chris thinks he is i think chris could be the king or queen well we've been sorting ourselves out it's about to get on the road and make our way towards spain and we finally stopped for the night it took slightly longer or we drove for sli slightly longer than we were planning on doing tonight because every single service station truck stop air that we passed were full like a chocker block we could not get in so we passed i think i think like three airs and two service stations probably like an extra hour on the road something like that anyway until we finally got to this one that had loads of space it was so random every 10 kilometers or so there's like another one and we'd get to it and it'd be absolutely rammed like and when i say rammed here i don't mean like the spaces are full i mean like every possible place you could put a truck is 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 put even on the slip road you know the slip road when you're coming out of a service station you're pulling onto the motorway no the slip road's lined with trucks this must be the aforementioned non complaining about things again it's just they were that full like properly full so uh, and then we got to this one <clears throat> it's like empty um it's not now a van's just pulled outside i can just hear his um generator so there's there is another trucker out there and there's a couple around but um compared to the other ones pretty empty which i'm impressed about um we did pull up to the most incredible it's still going on now i'm watching it through the sky roof i just turned the lights on to end the vlog but before that i was laid in the pitch black dark watching the thunder and lightning we've got the biggest thunderstorm over us right now it's not actually raining too bad but the lightning is like it's such a good electrical storm it's like constant i think chris just took a bit of footage on his phone so if you haven't already seen that that will be inserted now i was also planning on doing like a trip reveal not really a trip reveal but like a, a plan a trip plan so letting you guys know what our plan is for this trip because it did change um but i'm gonna do that tomorrow instead because it's just quite a long one and there's been a lot of talk in this vlog i think we filmed quite a bit today as well so i'll do, definitely do that tomorrow and i've had a few messages asking for a pregnancy update so i'll include that like if if not tomorrow then over the next day or two but thank you all so much for watching oh you're not going to include the trip plan which you planned on telling us a few days ago because the vlog is already too long. Well, Sarah, it was only 13 minutes. How in God's name do you have so much fun, so much to do in a day, and yet you managed to show 13 minutes? That's an absolute shocker of a performance, isn't it? So you really should have added that bit at the end, I feel. Although, maybe you're holding that back because you don't want people to actually figure out where you are and uh, track you down and, and have another kayak pool incident. Nobody's going to do that. You're in France, Sarah. Although, you know, remember those people that we talked about at the beginning of the vlog? The, 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 the IFAM or the rioters? One of those, yeah. Anyway, they could track you down. So, that was, yeah... The, the entire vlog was absolutely shocking. Absolutely shocking. These two need to take a long, hard look in the mirror, figure out that what they want to do, and try not to kill their kids. Try not to pimp their kids out. Just try to be normal and not harm their kids in any way, shape, or form. And Chris, you need to open your eyes to the world because not everything is a conspiracy. There are problems in France at the moment. It's really upsetting. It's really sad. And yet you, being in France, haven't got a clue because you want to uh, go paddleboarding in a place you've been to three times previously. Everybody have a lovely day. Thank you for joining me 
don't forget to give this video a massive thumbs up comment everything you want to comment down below and subscribe to the channel get me up to 10,000 subs until next time have a lovely day take care of yourselves and bye bye